Hey everyone, so I thought I'd change it up a bit and talk about some things that I'm sure we're all looking forward to this year. 2023 is stacked to the brim with an awesome selection of games to choose from. Oh, and I will be going through the list in order of what comes out first to what comes out at the end of the year, so anyway, let's just talk about it. So right off the bat, next week we have Dead Space coming out, and uh, I'm really excited for this game. This isn't going to be like other remakes that we've gotten over the past couple years like Capcom has released. Uh, the developers for this are making sure to include not only the original design, but to amplify the horror with an AI director watching over you. Basically, every playthrough can be something different with this edition, and I don't think many people are aware of how good this can actually be, especially for the survival horror genre. Allowing an AI director to guide the horror elements to the player instead of having just scripted moments, moments that you'll always know are going to be there, will just add another piece of the puzzle that is already a beautiful design of what Dead Space is. So needless to say, I'm already really excited to explore the USS Ishimura one more time with this edition, as well as run from the terror that probably awaits me around every corner. Okay, rolling into February now, February 21st, Atomic Heart comes out, and uh, a Bioshock-inspired game set with the utopia of an alternate post-World War II world? Yeah, okay, sign me up. I've been looking forward to this game for so long now, and uh, although this entry was announced a couple years ago, the polish and the last few trailers that have been released have been incredible. Uh, the combat, the gameplay, everything that I've seen for this game has been over the top and almost too good to be true. I do think this is going to be a really nice contender though for every other first person shooter of the year, so I'm mean, really excited, I'm really excited to see this one. So the trailers have kind of been a little hard to understand, so the breakdown of basically what this game is, is that the machines are starting a rebellion and after a huge major system failure at a Soviet facility, you're tasked with minimizing the outcome of this failure and preventing any leaks from any classified information from reaching the public's ear. So I'm really looking forward to venturing out in the world of the chaotic unknown. Okay, speaking of remakes, March 24th, Resident Evil 4 remake. I'm not gonna lie, when I heard that my favorite entry in the world of Resident Evil was getting a remake, I got so excited to see the cast in a new light. RE4 to this day still holds up incredibly well, but to see the main cast as well as the villains of the story fully fleshed out, it had me even more hyped than before. This game, I'm sure, just like its previous titles, will be faithful to its original setting, but I am hoping for some differences, like maybe a couple shifts in the puzzles, maybe boss fights are going to be a little different. As long as too much isn't changed from the main story, I know this will be something I enjoy either way, so I'm very excited to see Resident Evil in a new light. Okay, so moving on to April, uh, Meet Your Maker's coming out. So for those of you guys that didn't know, the creators of Dead by Daylight are trying to mix things up. Uh, its core gameplay loop is to build, raid, and explore. And you can take level design to new heights with this one. You can build new outposts for players to explore, and you can set traps so that they have to fight for new resources. It's really cool. The big catch for this game's true PvP actually doesn't put the player against another player, but a player against another player's creation. I don't know, it's a nice twist. You can alter the way you play by collecting resources at a different base and making yours even more powerful. So when I saw that you can raid with a friend into another enemy base, I thought it was something I'd really enjoy. I already love customizations in games like this, especially with a twist of becoming even stronger. This game definitely seems like it's going to be a challenge to master, but once you do, it's going to be extremely rewarding to the players that fully dive in. Alright, it's time for no surprises on this list. I think anyone who owns a Switch is probably going to grab this next game. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom coming out on May 12th. Uh, I, I don't know what else I could say. It's It's been a part of my entire life since I was a kid. I've been playing Zelda games probably since I can walk. So after playing the stunningly beautiful Breath of the Wild, I already was looking forward to the next direction that Nintendo was going to take. And to my surprise, they're never going to disappoint you. Again, this was announced a long time ago, but we already know that we're going to get Link back in our hands and we're going to see an entire world either that we revisit or explore. A lot really hasn't been discussed with this game, and truthfully, it's okay with me. I tend to not want to know too much about an adventure game because that's kind of part of the charm. Usually, it's dangerous to go alone, but this time it looks like we won't be for long. It might be a long shot, but from the first trailer, we did see Zelda in what looks like an adventurer's attire, so maybe we can explore along with the princess. I don't know. I'm really excited to see what Nintendo has in store for us and what they're going to do for this next legendary adventure. So Final Fantasy is getting another game. On June 22nd, Final Fantasy 16 drops, and I have played almost every single title from the Final Fantasy series, and this won't be one I miss. 
So back around in the middle of 2020, I fell in love with Final Fantasy XIV, and even though it's an MMORPG, it blends the worlds of Final Fantasy super well, and I also know how much the game has changed over the years. Final Fantasy XIV was known to be a flop for Square Enix, but its leader Yoshi P did not give up. He wove the storyline to exist within the previous release and made it into something I am so happy I got to experience. Well, how does that relate to Final Fantasy XVI? I'll tell you. Creative Director Yoshi P is back, and he's headlining this title as well. For those of you guys that do not know about him, he is a creative genius and is willing to strive to make something you will remember and appreciate. The graphic quality mixed with the flesh out icons and summons from the former entry shines super bright here, and seeing as how we're getting a nice array of characters within this one, I'm sure this will be a great new title for most Final Fantasy fans. So now is when we get to the more difficult part of the video. Since these titles have been announced and the releases are a little undefined or maybe changed in the past, I just want to talk about them regardless because I'm really excited to play them in the future. Alright, so first off is Baldur's Gate 3. It's slated for an August release, like full release. So the game's been in early access for about two years, two and a half years, and showing some amazing progress within the world that Larian Studios has been crafting for some time now. For those that wish they could play D&D with a group, or even on your own, keep this game on your radar. It's very, very good. And if you have the chance to play Original Sin 2, do yourself a favor and play that too. Liza P was also just announced for a 2023 release, and I know we can expect a lot of inspiration from what looks like the Soulsborne series. Although not much has been released regarding this game, it looks like you can play through a darker tale of Pinocchio with the sole goal of just becoming human. Uh, if it borrows any inspiration from my favorite FromSoft game, Bloodborne, then I am sure we will enjoy this unrelenting grim dark world. And lastly, this game has been in production for almost a decade now. It was announced back in 2010, I believe. Uh, then it was pushed back, it was cancelled, it was re-announced. After a super long hiatus in 2021, we were shown a brand new trailer showcasing what this amazing team has been working on. And uh, I'm talking about Stalker 2, by the way. Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. Uh, this is probably the most anticipated game this year for myself. Uh, from being in a post-apocalyptic world revolving around the real-world issues regarding Chernobyl, you take the role of a stalker, who is somebody who is a part of another faction in the world trying to survive within the zone. Although we may not know too much about the story yet, the open world adds an immense change to how we perceive survival horror, and with rampant mutants, ever-changing anomalies, and the survival of our own character, it looks like the AI will be resilient as ever in this one. This title is something I've been looking forward to for years now. It's also worth noting that GSC Game World is a Ukrainian-based development team that has lost family and friends amongst their struggles in the war currently going on within their country. And that being said, it's an incredible feat to keep the focus on releasing the game this year. All in all though, I really hope that they can just look back and savor their efforts for their accomplishments. So that's it. Those are my most anticipated games of 2023. The beauty of gaming is that we all have different tastes, so please let me know in the comments some of your most anticipated games this year, as well as any other games I may have missed. Now I got some games to go finish before the next one comes out, so I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one. See ya.